But yeah, that's, you know, good computer. They also announced a display with it. Less, less positive things with the display. Now, I was really happy with the way I was able to put together this review. It's a very unusual product, I For think, sure. is, is where this all started. For sure. It's called the Studio, and I think the main problem with its positioning is it is, well, this has happened before with Apple products, but it doesn't really match up to anything. If they want to call it the Studio, then it should be a high-end panel with uh, background back, backlight zone dimming. It should have different, it should have mini LED probably. Maybe it'll have pro pro motion. It's got to do something in the high end if it's going to be a studio monitor. Funny enough, though, I, um, based on their other naming schemes and products, I actually think it fits perfectly where it is. Okay, I I'll give hear you my. That. So my reason basically is, is I think the monitor for the Mac Pro right now is the Pro Display XDR. Correct. I don't know if Studio is their full. Pro thing because they say they're coming out with another Mac Pro. That's so true. Studio feels like the slightly smaller version, but still like prosumer, okay, cheaper I'll, commercial. I'll kind clarify. Of computer. Okay, I I think you're right. It it has to be underneath the Mac, the underneath the Pro product with this, which is the Pro yeah. Display XDR. It just doesn't get low enough. Okay, okay. So when you get so it's sixteen hundred dollars with non height adjustable stand. You add the height adjust. Now it's Two thousand dollars. Yeah, um, and you add nano texture, and now it's twenty three hundred dollars. Exactly. Yeah. This monitor isn't necessarily a better panel for a lot of people's uses, mm -hmm. but it does certain things really well that certain people are gonna love, no matter what the price is. Wait, and that was a challenge for the review. Can I say the one thing it does the best, which you said this morning mm -hmm. that I I loved? the naming and at first i was like oh it's just studio display but look at every other yeah. monitor's name out there please everybody else follow a factor like this i cannot tell you the name of both of the monitors on my desk at home because they're both like asus tough vs 248 qg 100%. pros or something like that <laughs> and i have absolutely no idea and whenever anybody asks me it takes me 10 minutes to find my yeah. past order and think of what it was. The the two that I compared it to in the video were the LG Ultrafine 5K, not bad, mm -hmm. then the Dell UltraSharp U2820Q, not a great name. Bad. Um, bad, bad, bad. So studio display is very easy to remember, rolls yes. off the tongue. But yeah, I guess my challenge was like, yo, this is not a great deal for most people who are cross shopping the, the thing that this is designed for is for people who are not cross-shopping. They were just looking for a yep. better Mac monitor. It just works with plug and play. It has a webcam and speakers built in. The speakers happen to be very good, in my opinion. If you're yeah. into built-in speakers, you don't want to have extras. That's great. You don't even have to think about it. The webcam, not that great, but whatever. It's a webcam. Most people don't have a huge investment in how good the built-in webcam quality is, mm -hmm. even though I was expecting better. Um, and... There's a huge world of monitors out there that just don't work that well with the Mac. I reviewed the the LG Ultrafine 5K. I had to look back. It was five years ago. And the thing- That was its own. It, had, it was made of plastic. It had these weird shielding issues with Wi-Fi, which I've never hilarious. seen. hilarious. Very strange. Impressive. But then also just like plug and play. Sometimes it would just not wake up when I'd wake the Mac up. The The Mac Mini I plugged it into would wake up and then the LG Ultrafine would stay asleep and I'd have to restart the Mac Mini to get the monitor to light up. Like mm -hmm. all these weird little quirks that people have been dealing with with monitors for a long time and you get one from Apple, you know it's just like, all right, plug and play. It's just going to be fine. Yeah. And there isn't really a price for that unless you're Apple in which you say, okay, that's worth $1,600. Yeah. And so the way I reviewed it was, I mean, you can watch the video, but to summarize, it was like, all right, is this a good deal? It's 5K, 27 inch, 600 nits, P3 color, 60 hertz LCD. If you want to do like a comp of like, let's say you're a real estate agent and you're like, how yeah. much is this house worth? All right, I'm going to find another house with the same number of bedrooms and square feet and in the same location. And then the price of that with the same finishes is probably the same as the other that other house. So I'll find another monitor with the same specs. The closest one is the LG Ultrafine 5K. Mm -hmm. That's like, yeah, you get really close on paper, but I don't want that monitor. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not as good of a, an experience. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, at the end of the video, I said, look, is the Rolls Royce Ghost a good deal? Because it's the only four-door sedan with suicide doors with a 6.7 liter V12 that's under 400 grand. There's two, by the way, just <laughs> like the monitors. There's one that's 400 grand and one is, one is 300 grand. The nano textured Rolls Royce. <laughs> exactly. Is that a good deal? No. But if that's what you want, yeah. then it doesn't really matter that like a Chrysler 300 is a better deal because I want the one with the thing. And I did the same thing with the shoes. Like, all right, is the, I think Adam had this idea. Like, are the Nike Hyper Adapts a good deal? I want self-lacing shoes. That's that's all I really care about. Yeah. Well, okay, but the Jordan 1s are a better deal. They're only, they're only 130 bucks. Yeah, but I want to do the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're 300 bucks. It doesn't make it a good deal. Yes. Apple will notoriously find a way to charge more for something like they did with this. The conclusion is it's not a great deal, but it's a good monitor for a lot of people and they're going to get it and they're going to like it. Yeah, you're you're allowed to like things that aren't good deals. It happens exactly all of the time. A 3090 is not a good deal, but True. like sometimes you want that. I mean, maybe that's performance wise, you know, you are you can perfectly compare it to something lower than that. But like in this sense, if you want this, if you see the studio display monitor and are like. I, I love everything about that. I love how it looks. I love how the build quality is on it. I love the compatibility with my Apple products. Like everything on this, I really want 5K over 4K for some reason. I mean, that's- uh, The reason is actually kind of substantial. It I might've downplayed it a bit in the review. It works really well with- The scaling, I, so it's exactly yeah. twice the resolution of 2560 by 1440. So the scaling doesn't have to do anything wonky. Okay. And 5K is almost double the pixel count of 4K. So 3120 okay. by 14, whatever, the the actual number yeah. of pixels you get, so you can edit a native 4K video and have UI around it. Okay. A lot of stuff like that. There's not that many 5K monitors, but that is pretty nice but as yeah, a pixel lover. Comparability wise, it's, but let's, so like, if that is your thing, if this, if this all fits in it, you can buy that and you can love it and it doesn't matter that it's a bad, if it's yeah. not like a good deal. Like n there's not a single person, the biggest person who loves that thing, I don't think is sitting there and being like, Man, I really pulled one over on Apple, and like I really got a, a a good a good deal here. I hate saying the word a million times, but that's totally fine. Yeah. A lot of times, products feature is the fact that it's really a good bargain for the money. This is the Apple special. That's though. just not what this one is, yeah. but it has everything else. Exactly. So that's awesome. Yeah, this is the Apple specialty. If you ever ask somebody who buys, actually, probably the telltale sign to know if an Apple product is for you or not is the second you start cross shopping and seriously considering other products, you probably know this one's not for you. Yeah. Like if so. you look into, you're like, you know what? I think I need a new monitor. I wonder which one I'm gonna get. Let's compare the studio display with X. Immediately you're gonna find like, okay, the fact I'm even considering these other monitors means I'm not sick of them, which means I'll probably get a better deal and I'll just go with the one that's a third of the price. Yeah. But if you're just, oh man, I've had all these other monitors and Apple just released this monitor that's just made for Apple products, I'm just gonna get this one. That's the type of person that Apple's aiming for, and I think they nailed that. I do really think the real estate reference was probably the best analogy here, because like I, I just remember looking for for houses. It's like you want this many bedroom, like bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage. That's all super obvious. But then we were looking at things like fenced in yard, w over an acre of property, under two acres of property, like very specific things. And then the comparables get less, less, less. And then mm -hmm. you're like. Oh, here's two houses in these price ranges. What but like they they have totally different things in them and it's just like mm -hmm. eventually you're like, okay, that's the one. It's more money, but it has every single thing that we want and we're just going to move into it and we're going to be really happy about it. Yeah. Yeah, let's say even if this monitor was uh 1300. Let's say it's the same price as the LG Ultrafine 5K. Yeah. There's still going to be people who would never consider the LG. Yeah. So fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Apple can can charge a little bit for that. But yeah, that's those are the two products. They're both studio products. I think every time now that now that we've done the reviews, I'm still left in like, what will this Mac Pro be? Can like I say one more thing about it? Yeah. My biggest gripe about it, um, like I know Apple loves to do the thing of where VES amount, VES amount, I I'm never quite sure if I'm pronouncing it. Um, is like 
extra, or it's not extra, but it's an at, you can't have the stand and then detach it and have that. My biggest yeah. gripe about it is that it's not centered on the monitor. So a lot of people were talking about screen it's rotation. Not? No, it's like down low, like an iMac. It's probably on like oh. the bottom quarter, bottom third. Okay. Um, So the hinge is towards the bottom where when it's vest amount, I'm not sure how well that would hold up on like a rotating arm if you did it. I'm sh hmm. It would probably be fine, but there's always going to be that little imbalance or like different center of gravity because you're pulling from like a third down it or now rotated a third to the side of it. I mean, right. that might be the, something you get used to. The build know. quality is really good, so I'm sure. Yeah. But like if you took that plastic LG Ultrafine and held it from like a bottom corner of that, I feel creaking. like that would be creaking <laughs> and like really pulling on some parts of the frame that wouldn't hold up very well. Yeah, that's um, even one of the things, the the build quality wonder, of this monitor is its biggest pro and its biggest con. It's so weird. The hinge, Yeah. like, okay, first of all, everything is, it's metal, it's got these sharp corners, like most monitors are plastic. So right off the bat, it's like built really well. Oh, yeah. The hinge is incredibly well balanced. If you get the height adjustment, which is 400 extra dollars, yeah. it, it, it height adjusts really stably. It doesn't rotate, which actually makes it feel more stable than the Pro Display XDR, which is mm -hmm. a $1,000 stand. Um, but the downsides are like, it's fixed. So whichever one you get, you can't use or upgrade. Oh, you have yeah. to send it to Apple if you want to change it out. Mm -hmm. And two, the power cable, that whole debacle, it's, it's not designed to be removed. Yeah even though you can pull really hard and rip it out the back. We had a review unit. You're not supposed to damage yeah. these things when you have review units. Linus has a Lots of people bought them and like pulled really hard and you can eventually rip it out the back, but that's how you can tell you're not supposed to. Like a normal monitor, what happens? Yeah, you yeah. just pull it right out the back mm -hmm. and it's fine. Um, and so somebody found that there's a tool that you can use that you're supposed to use. Yeah. I don't even know. Is this an Apple tool or something that people are supposed to buy? I don't know. I think I'm it's probably an Apple internal tool, Apple tool, yeah. but that literally like you wrap the cable around it and like twist and it, it pushes up leverage, against leverage. Yeah. Leverage to pull, rip the cable out the back. Yeah. It's, it's weird. You're not designed to upgrade it. And that's like, let's say you have a cat chewing on a cable. You have to now replace yeah. the entire monitor. I did see a lot of people prepared. saying, what difference does that make? And I agree and disagree. There are instances like that. You can fray a wire. You can, I mean, especially if you have like, you know, sometimes when your desk is pushed up too close to the outlet, so you're like jamming a plug in there and now it's almost at a it's right bad. angle and you're just going to, the wire is going to start fraying. Or if you're in a professional setting where like IT has to move computers around a lot or move desks, like moving a monitor where the cable's hanging or you have to like wrap it up is it's just more difficult. It's so yeah. much easier when you can just pull all the cables out, toss them in a box, move the tower and monitor, and then put all the cables back in. Yeah, um, and even if you never, minor, but... even if you never have to deal with the cable again or damage it, for a lot of people, it's still a man. It's still a matter of principle. Like, yeah, really, you're gonna make the monitor you're gonna this. like you, you're gonna lock it in and not let me replace it if I want. That you know made a lot of people disappointed. But yeah, to me personally, I'm like, all right. That's, that's just another thing Apple can do, and that's a very thing that only Apple would do. Yep. Um, but there it is. That's the studio display. I would recommend not getting the nano texture if you don't need it. It is incredibly hard to clean. That's the one that thing I've is, noticed. Yeah, my XDR makes me we very all, mad. We all got the nano textures because we, live, we, we shoot in this very bright, very well-lit studio, mm -hmm. and it really does a great job of getting rid of reflections. But if you like drag a, an eyelash across the thing it leaves a huge mark and, and you, it's pretty, you're not supposed pretty to hard cleaning supplies and the cloth you need the special spiking. cloth it still doesn't always work mine looks like i sneeze on it every day <laughs> it's uh -oh. not great so that's a if you're considering getting it that's my little pro tip hey thanks for watching that clip make sure you hit subscribe to be an early investor in our upcoming video platform oh. that's right you don't want to be uh stuck with the big bad youtube they've made their ecosystem which is just youtube.com, YouTube music, YouTube stuff. Yeah, we're nothing like YouTube. Ours is gonna be way better. We're gonna change the world. And just for comparison, we have the same exact technology that YouTube uses. So it's gonna be, you know, playing back, it's gonna be smooth. It's, it's just transparent. It's just transparent. That's it. Exactly. It's the so only difference. what you're gonna wanna do is hit that red button to invest um, stocks just straight to the moon. I mean, that's the only thing we could see possibly happening here. You yeah. can't afford not to get in at this ground level opportunity. 
is a Series A uh, uh, investment. Yeah, and, and we'll announce our announcement soon. Yeah. Coming summer 2020 something. Um, and you should be pretty hyped about it. For sure. See you guys there.